Welcome to Touching the Ozarks, the weekly television broadcast ministry of Ozark Full Gospel Church, featuring the Bible teaching of Pastor James Akins. Thank you for joining us and stay tuned as we get ready to hear another message from God's exciting word. Jesus said, when I die for the world, I'm going to the tomb and I'm going to get up from the grave and I'm going to offer salvation to the whole world. And I want you to know for the Christian, the best is yet to come. At Ozark Full Gospel Church, we have three exciting services every week. Our service times are Sunday morning at 10.30, Sunday night at 6 p.m., and Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. There is meaningful praise and worship and powerful Bible preaching at every service, and we never close for any reason. In addition, be sure to follow us on social media to stay up to date with all of our upcoming events and most current information. We look forward to seeing you soon, right here where we are touching the Ozarks with Jesus Christ. We're, we're going to be in the fifth chapter of St. Mark. We're going to begin reading with verse 25 and go down to verse 35. This story is also found in Matthew chapter 9 and in Luke chapter 8. It's the story about the woman with the issue of blood. Twelve years she suffered. Twelve years she sought for her healing. Twelve years she came up empty. But on that twelfth year, Jesus Christ touched her, or she touched him rather, and she was healed because this woman touched Jesus. And so we're going to begin reading with verse 25. Let's stand for the reading of God's Word. And um, the Lord gave this message to me a few weeks back, and I just uh, feel in my heart that it's very needed today, especially for those that are seeking healing. Verse 25, and a certain woman, which had an issue of blood 12 years. Let me say, stop right there and tell you that no one saw the blood. It was hidden. Something was going on inside her. And she had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing bettered but rather grew worse. And when she had heard of Jesus, she came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may but touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. That's what you want if you're sick in body. You want to feel in your body that you're healed. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had uh, gone out of him, the surge of God's power had gone out of him, turned him about in the press, the crowd, and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and thou sayest, Who touched me? And he looked around about to see her, that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. I want to use for a subject tonight in pursuit of healing. You may be seated. In pursuit of healing, this woman, the Bible calls her a certain woman, she was not identified by her name, but by her sickness. And what she did about her sickness. I think it's amazing. God really doesn't care what your name is. He loves you. He cares about you. There's no respect to person with him. But what you don't want to be recognized or identified as with your sickness, you need to be identified as with your Savior. And she was in pursuit of her healing. Amen? 
When someone talks about me, I want them to not so much say, well, you know, James Akins is the pastor there. I want people to say, he's a Christian. I want to be identified with Christ. He's a Christian. And so this woman with an issue of blood, no one could see it. It was hidden. But she was hemorrhaging inside. And there's a lot of, isn't that a lot about sickness? Not always, but many times sickness hides in the body. It does protrude out from time to time, but basically sickness tries to hide within the shell of our being. And it does its dirty work. It does its killing work, disease and sickness. And this woman had went to doctor after doctor after doctor. She had spent a lot of money. I'm grateful for doctors. I'm grateful for medicine. I am very much um, pro-doctor and pro-medicine. I'm very much for that. I think that God gave them great skill. And I think it's beautiful that Apostle Paul had his own very, his very own physician that went with him. So, you know, that's awesome. Amen. How many would like to have your own physician going with you? In fact, Luke was probably Paul's servant. And um, that would be pretty cool to have a doctor that's your servant. They have to do what you tell them to do and not charge you a bunch of money. But their skill is amazing. Doctors are amazing. But we don't want to ever be at the mercy of just doctors. It's, it's good to have doctors. But we don't want to be at the mercy of just doctors. We don't want to be at the mercy of just medicine. We want to be at the mercy of God. Because where the mercy of God is, all things are possible. The miracle touch of God will come. And so when you got the flu bug, you don't necessarily seek healing. You just, you just feel so bad you want to die. But when you, the doctor tells you you've got something that's going to stay with you, linger with you for years to come, and perhaps even try to kill you, then you begin what is called a pursuit of healing. This woman began her pursuit of healing. She began with doctors. Uh, whatever their treatment was at that time, probably many things caused her to suffer. I mean, you know, sometimes treatments are very painful. And sometimes those treatments are for your good, but other times you feel like, oh man, why did I even do this? But the truth is, uh, I'm thankful for the skill that is in doctors. And I want you to understand that God gave us doctors and God gave us medicine. And they're working on the same team as God. But we're not at the mercy of just doctors. We're not at the mercy of just medicine. We as Christians are at the mercy of Jesus Christ. And he's got plenty to go around. He's the God who heals. This woman, an issue of blood for 12 years... She heard about Jesus Christ. That's the beginning of your healing. Hear about Jesus Christ. Hear, uh, hear about his magnificent power. That's the beginning. You've got to hear about this wonderful Savior. And she heard. And when she heard, the more she heard about Jesus, the more pumped she got. The more she heard about Jesus, the more excited she got. The more she heard about Jesus, the more faith rose up in her heart. To the degree, she's wasting away. She's unclean according to Levitical law. She's not allowed to touch anyone because they would be unclean because of her blood issue. And yet she come to the crowd. She probably got down on her hands and knees and walked through the legs and through the crowd just to get to Jesus. And she kept saying in herself, Kept saying in her heart, if I can just touch his clothes, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I know I'll be made whole. And she kept saying it, if I can just touch him, if I can just, I don't have to kiss his cheek, I don't have to hug his neck, if I can just brush against his presence, I'll be healed. And she comes in and she gets in there and she touches the hem of Jesus' garment. And when she did, all the glory broke loose. 
Woo, the surge of power surged out of Jesus. The virtue and the power of Almighty God came out of that. It wasn't static electricity. It was the fire of God flowed out of the garments of Jesus Christ, the presence of Jesus Christ, and she was instantly healed, and she felt in her body she was healed. The blood stopped immediately. The bleeding stopped suddenly. And no doubt she began to with draw back into the crowd and Jesus turns around to his disciples and says, all right now, who touched my clothes? And the disciples said, they're all around you. Everybody's touching you. I mean, everybody's grabbing at your clothes. And, and Jesus says, no, 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 boys. You got it all wrong. Somebody touch me with faith. Somebody touch me with a hunger of, of, of healing power. Somebody touch me with, with the reach of God, the faith of God. She reached out and touched me. Somebody touch me. And, when, and Jesus looked around. And, of course, Jesus knew where she was, but maybe she was huddled down behind some people. When she saw that she couldn't be hid, she came and ran and fell at the feet of Jesus and worshiped him. And Jesus Christ said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you whole. You may go. And you may go totally healed and set free by the power of God. I want to point out some things that's very important, and I'm going to get real personal with you. This woman did four major things when she discovered that she was terminally ill. She was bleeding for 12 years. She was not getting better. She, she made four major decisions, according to the story. First of all, she hung out with the right crowd. She got in the right crowd. And the crowd looked at her as being a dirty thing, an unclean thing. But it didn't matter. She's going to join the right crowd. It makes no difference what your past was like. It makes no difference what your present's like. It makes no difference what kind of filth or sin is in your life. Be with the right crowd. Get with the right crowd. I say get with the right crowd. Get with the right crowd that loves Jesus Christ. Get with the right crowd. Because as far as I'm concerned, I don't think the Bible showed anybody being contaminated by this woman. Because Jesus had the whole crowd covered by his glory. And let me tell you, friends, Jesus will cover a crowd with his glory. And someone in that crowd may be as bad as they can be. But she ran with the right crowd. Number two, because she was running with the right crowd, she was going after her healing. You say, well, preacher, I don't believe in going after my healing. You don't? Why'd you go to the doctor for? Preacher, I don't believe in going after my healing. You don't? Why'd you go to the pharmacist for? Get some medicine. Yeah, you believe in healing. And you believe in the pursuit of healing. Let's get God involved in our healing process. Let's get God reaching out and let's have God, because God can do more than doctors. And by the way, if the doctors are successful, God gave them that success. If medicine is successful, God gave them that medicine. Because nobody heals without the healing power of God. God put inside of us an immune system. And when you get over a sickness, it's not because you are strong. It's because God put his blessing on your bodies to heal itself by that immune system. Go after your healing. She went after her healing. She felt unworthy. She was unclean. She struggled. She came to the crowd. She was in the right crowd. I mean, no, we need to get in the right crowd if we're going to Get some things from the Lord. And, and so many times people, when they get sick, they get with the wrong crowd. They get with the crowd that tells them, you're going to die. They get with the crowd that say, oh, I'm so sorry for you, you poor thing. You, you only got a day or two to live. People talk that way. I mean, the wrong way for a preacher to act is if he walks in a, into a hospital room. And the wrong thing for that preacher to say to someone that's about to face open heart surgery as if you died tonight, would you go to heaven? 
Wrong words. Don knows that's the wrong way to approach it. But you need to be with the right crowd. The crowd that believes that Jesus is the healer. The crowd that's following Jesus. The crowd that's excited about the power of Jesus. The crowd that's going after Jesus. And so she got in the right crowd and she followed and she went after her healing. Number three, know where your crowd is going. She knew where her crowd was going. Her crowd was going to heal Jairus' daughter that was sick. She knew where her crowd was going. She knew her crowd was going to follow Jesus to the cross of Calvary. She knew her crowd was going to follow Jesus wherever he went. And she knew that in the hands of Jesus was healing. Follow, we know where our crowd is going. I know where I'm going. How many of you know where you're going? If you don't know where you're going, I need to pray for you. If you don't know, if you don't know where you're going, you need help. But if, if a crowd tells me they don't know where they're going, I'm not getting in the crowd. Amen? That's like getting aboard an airplane and the pilot says, I don't know where I'm going. We've got a quarter of a tank of gas and can't get any more. I don't know where I'm going, but we're going to go. No, we're not. I'm getting out. I want to be with people that know where they're going. I'm going to heaven. And on my way to heaven, I'm going to get healed. And, and you say, how many times are you going to be healed? How many times it takes? Amen? We need to be that group of people that believes that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Woo! Praise the Lord. She knew where her crowd was going. And number four, she lived out her faith. She lived out her faith. She pursued her Savior, Jesus Christ. Now here's where it's going to get really tough you find your healing in two places I'm not talk I realize healing is in the person of Jesus Christ but you find your healing in two places and of course when I say that understand that Jesus is the healer and he's the only place of healing but you find your healing in two places number one you get it in your head and number two you get it in your heart you find your healing in two places, one in your head, one in your heart. You got to get it in your head. You must get healing in your head. You must get the doubts out. You must be pumped and infused with the power and the positive thinking of God. You must be pumped with Jesus Christ and understand in Hebrews 13 and 8, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. The same Jesus that walked on the water can walk on the water today and forever. Nothing's changed. Hello. Malachi chapter 3, verse 6 says, I am the Lord God. I change not. He's the Lord God. I change not. And the scripture goes on to say, Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. You, you got to get this in your head, that Jesus Christ never changes. You've got to get this in your head, that God loves you. You got to get this in your head, that God watches over you. You got to get this in your head, that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You got to get this in your head, that God is a God of miracle working power. Your mind, your head, your mind, can be divided into three parts. I know some folks that are scatterbrained, it's many parts, but anyway, your mind is divided, divided into three parts. You say, how, how could you possibly say my mind is divided into three parts? Here they are, past, present, and future. That's where your mind's divided into three parts, past, present, and future. And if you live in the past, you struggle sometimes with issues. But I want you to know Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. 
And just as Jesus Christ healed the sick yesterday, he heals the sick today. Hello. And we need to get this in our head that our minds divided up in three parts, yesterday, today, and forever. If we can't get our past submerged under the mercy of God, we'll never find healing for our bodies. We'll never find healing for our soul. We'll never find healing for our spirit. We must get our past baptized in the wonderful mercy and grace of God and let it be. Leave it at the bottom of the sea of God's forgetfulness. Leave it at the bottom of the sea of God's mercy. Let your past that's ugly, your past that's dirty, your past that defiles you, your past, take it all, wrap it up, hand it to Jesus Christ and let Jesus Christ submerge it under the water of his mercy and his grace. We must divide our minds up in three, past, present, and future. The present, we need to know that Jesus Christ not only healed the sick yesterday, but he heals the sick today. We need to know that Jesus Christ not only forgives yesterday, but he forgives today. We need to understand that no matter what we're facing, God's a good God. God's a merciful God, and he's a merciful God today. He's the Lord God that, that lies not. He's the Lord God that changes not. He's the Lord God that's full of abundant mercy and grace. Get your present saturated with the word of God. Get your mind today saturated with the goodness of God. Get your mind filled with the goodness of God, and then look into the future and know that God, I give you my future. There's nothing I can do about my future. I, you know, I can't handle even tomorrow. But I can hand tomorrow to you, God. I know who holds tomorrow in his hands. And you need to just put your future into the hands of God. For Jesus Christ says, I will keep you and you will not perish. All them that hear me, hear my voice, come to me. I know them. That when All them that come to me, I, I will keep them, and they shall never perish. John chapter 10. And so we need to give our future to God, our present to God, our today to God. Amen? The mind, past memories. You can divide our life up in three parts. Our life can be divided in three parts. Our mind, our memories of the past, our awareness of today, and our hope of tomorrow. But our life is not just mind, but we live in a body. And the body and your mind is not you. You live in your body and you have a mind. So many people try to say, well, your mind is you. No, you're much more than just a mind. You're made in the image of God. And so you need to take your past, your memories, the bad memories. You need to put them behind you because Jesus Christ is a forgiver. You need to take your today and understand that it's not just yesterday, but it's also today that Jesus forgives and is merciful, past, present, and future. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. So we're made up of our mind, our memories, past, present, and future, our body in which we live in, past, present, and future, and then our, just us, you and I, we, our past, present, and future. And how many know that as a child of God, I've got a good future because God took a care, has taken care of my, my past? How many... How many are excited that you've got a good future because God's taking care of your past? It's your present that you get all bummed out about. It's your today that messes you up. Put your past behind under the forgiveness of mercy of God and look forward to the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And don't let today ruin your day. Don't let your worries ruin your day. We must be healed in our mind. We must be healed in our heart. We must be touched in our mind. We must be filled with God's word. 
Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. We put our mind in Jesus Christ. Woo, praise the Lord. Let me share some things with you, and we're going to wrap this sermon up pretty quickly. But I, first of all, I want to say that you must get your healing in your mind. You, you got to get it in your head. You got to get it in your head. Your past is past. You got to get it in your head that God's a good God. You got to get it in your head that God takes care of the failures of your life and you're not going to perfect yourself today, nor are you going to perfect yourself in the future. Everything was covered at the cross of Calvary. Everything was paid for through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus is our Savior. Praise God, we shall not be moved. We stand in the presence of God. Our mind is stable. We're trusting in the Lord. We're looking to God because we got healing in our mind. Listen, if you're going to be healed in your body, you've got to first get that healing in your mind. You can understand that God wants you healed. God wants you healed. You must get healing in your head. And that's the one thing that people, un, you know, they don't do it intentionally, but they get, they get doubt buried in people's heads. They get worried. And, and let me tell you, friends, your mind's enough to give you trouble without borrowing other people's minds. Amen? I heard a guy one time, I had a mind to give him a piece of my mind. I said, you better not. You ain't got much to give away. Everybody wants to be the professor in your life. Everybody wants to tell you what you should do and what you shouldn't do. Everybody wants to step out of their ranks going beyond their pay grade, going beyond their ability, and they want to tell you how to perform and you how to do. Let me, let me tell you, Brent, we've got people, we've got a power higher than man. His power is, is Jesus Christ. God's power is Jesus Christ. We've got something bigger than man. We've got God's Word. We've got the Holy Ghost. We've got the Spirit of God. We got the promises of God. Woo! Praise the Lord. You know, a lot of people don't like Bible thumpers. Because every time a Bible thumper gets around them, they start talking negative, and boy, now they pull out that Bible and boom, and thump, 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 right across their head. Bless God, don't tell me I'm, I've got to die. Don't tell me I've got to suffer. Well, you know, there's a right way and a wrong way. The best way is stay away from people like that. If they're not, if they're not going to be any better than to give you a tongue lashing, stay away from them. We need to fill ourselves with God's Word. Amen? I would never go to a doctor that would speak negative to me. I want him to tell me the truth. I would want a doctor to tell me the truth. And I'd want a doctor to tell me even if it's an ugly truth. But I would never go to a doctor that would speak negative and say, well, you know, there's nothing we can do. That, I'd go find me a doctor that says, there's something I can do. Amen? Right. Hello? I love it when people are positive. Because the longer you fight something terminal, the longer you live. Amen. I knew a guy that died at 98 years old out in Carson, uh, Carson uh, City, Carson Valley, Nevada. He lived to be 97 or 98. I think at 98 is when he had a birthday at the time of his departure. But he got cancer at the age of 14. And the doctors told him, you're dead. You'll never, you'll never be old enough to marry. You'll never have a car. You're going to die. And that, that old man told me, he said, I just looked at that doctor right in his face. And I just said, Doc, you're not in charge of when I go. And I'll just take my heart and my body and my life and put them in the hands of Almighty God. 
He took treatments. He had surgery. But he lived to be 97, 98 years old. He fought that many years. He was a happy man. He wasn't a grumpy old man. He was a happy man. He told me, when I die, the first thing I want you to do is he said, I want you to baptize me again. And I said, well, have you ever been baptized? He said, three or four times. And I said, well, you don't need to be baptized. He said, I'm 96 years old. Baptize me. And he had this stuff on his side where they had been treating him. And, and the doctor said, don't do it. And he said, I'm going to do it. I don't care what you say. You said, I'm going to die anyway. He wrapped himself. We, I mean, we wrapped him with cellophane wrapping. Just wrapped him up good and baptized him. When we baptized him, he lived another year after that when we baptized him. His four daughters got saved right there in the baptismal. Gave their heart to Jesus Christ right there. And the old man looked at me. His name was Dossie. The old man looked at me and he said, see there, I knew what I was doing. He knew if he could get this old coot into the baptistry, he could get his daughters to show up. And if he could get in that baptistry and get his daughters to show up, then he can get Jesus to show up. And Jesus did show up, and they got saved. That's another story. But all, all four of them get, give their heart to Jesus Christ. He died, 98 years old. And uh, I preached the funeral, and I never will forget what I preached. I preached a happy look at hell. A happy look at hell. He told me, he said, I want you to preach on hell when I die. Because I want people saved. And I got up and preached a happy look at hell. And I preached the whole funeral service saying, I'm so happy he didn't go to hell. I'm so happy that you don't have to go to hell. I'm so happy that I don't have to go to hell. I'm so happy that Jesus took my hell. That, that'll preach. And it did. But let's understand that you've got to get that healing in your mind. You've got to get it in your head first. Because in your head's where you worry. In your head's where you give up. In your head's where you're depressed. In your head when you're down and defeated. It's in your head. And you've got to get your head so full of Jesus, so full of God's Word. There ain't no room for bad stuff. Hello? Get it in your head. That's what that woman did that came to Jesus that had the issue of blood, she got it in her head. You know what she got in her head? She got in her head that Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. She got it in her head according to the fact that Jesus loves you. And I want you to know you get it, get it, you got to get it in your head. In Romans chapter 8, verse 35 through 39, his love never changes. God's love never changes. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. His love never changes. He loved you in your past. He loves you in your today. He'll love you in your future. His love, nothing shall separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Love, read it for yourself. The last few verses of Romans chapter 8, nothing will separate us from the love of God. Not tribulation, not sickness, not pain, not sorrow, not darkness, not height or depth, not angels or principality, nothing shall separate us from the love of God. And I want you to know, Jesus' love never changes. By the way, his forgiveness never changes. Jesus' forgiveness never changes. My favorite psalm is Psalm 136. His forgiveness never changes. Mercy is one step higher than forgiveness. Forgiveness conditions are made, but mercies when no, no conditions can be made, that God is just merciful. And Psalm 136 says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his mercy endureth forever. And 26 times, 26 times, not five times, not 10 times, not 15 times, not 16 times, 26 times God says his mercy endureth forever. Woo! 
get that in your head. God's mercy endures forever. His mercy, his forgiveness is forever. He never changes. His mercy, his forgiveness never changes. Hello. Hello out there. Get that in your head. Get that in your heart. His power never changes. Remember that Lord's Prayer? Matthew chapter 6, verse 13. It closes with this. It talks about, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. God's power is forever. God's never going to be drained. God never has to take a nap. God never yawns. God never says, oh, I'm so tired, I need to take a nap. God doesn't need a cat nap. God doesn't need it. God is powerful. He's an ancient of days, but he's a young, powerful, energetic God. There's nothing he cannot do. Get that in your head. There's nothing God cannot do. Get that in your heart. There's nothing that God, his mercy never gives up. His mercy never fails. It never changes. His love never changes. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. <laughs> Woo! By the way, his word never changes. His word never changes. Remember in uh, Matthew 24, verse 35, Jesus Christ said, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. His word never changes. You can go out there and the devil will give you a word. He'll say, You're no good, lousy, slimy lizard, you. God don't love you. God don't forgive you. You'll, you know, you just do it over and over again. You just keep sinning and God hates you. That's the devil talking. But God wrote down what he meant. God said what he meant. God wrote down what he meant. And he meant what he said. Nothing shall separate you from the love of God. His forgiveness is forever. His mercy endures forever. I am the Lord God. I change not. And if it were not for me, you sons of Jacob would be consumed. But I love you. I care for you. Nothing changes that. No matter what you say in your head, God's got it covered with his blood. No matter what you say in your heart, God's got it covered with his blood. And this woman that had an issue of blood kept saying in her heart, kept saying in her head, kept saying in her being, if I can just touch him, he'll, he'll heal me. If I can just touch the hem of his garment, he'll heal me. She said it. She believed it. She pursued it. He, she went after her healing. And when she went after her healing, God was there. And God was there to search through her, his mercy and her forgiveness. Did she deserve it? Not at all. Do you deserve it? Not at all. Do I deserve it? Not at all. But we've got a God that cares about us. Why don't you quit elevating your slimy wickedness too high and start elevating the glory and the righteousness of God high and lift it up and let his train fill the temple. Amen. Praise the Lord. Woo, I preach myself happy. God's word never changes. That brings me to the last part. Get, get it in your heart. Get God's love in your heart. So you got to get it in your head, then you got to get it in your heart. And when you get it in your head, and then you get it in your heart, you can have your healing. God will heal you. You must get healing in your heart. Exodus 15, verse 25 Exodus 15, verse 25. It says that they came out of the wilderness of Shur, and there coming out of the wilderness of Shur, they had no water after they came out of Egyptian bondage out of the Red Sea. And there in that wilderness, they came to a place they needed water. It was called Mara, meaning bitterness. And the water was poison. Poison. They couldn't drink it. And they got very upset. And they told Moses, you brought us out here to die. And Moses cried unto the Lord. How many know that God's people need to cry unto the Lord and God's leaders need to cry unto the Lord? Hello. 
And here's the beautiful part, verse 25 of Exodus 25. God showed Moses a tree. And I want you to know your heart needs to see a tree. It needs the tree of life. Your heart needs the tree of life. The tree of life, the leaves are for the healing of the nations. The tree of life is for the healing of you and I. The tree of life has a name. His name is Jesus Christ. And the tree of life was crucified on the cross of Calvary. And the Bible doesn't say that God showed Moses just any tree. The Bible says that God showed Moses a certain tree. He showed Moses a tree. Moses cut that tree down and fell into the water. When it fell into the water, the waters were made sweet. The waters were healed. And I want you to know when you get in your heart that tree where Jesus Christ bled and died, when you get in your heart God's mercy, when you get in your mind and in your heart what God did for you at Calvary, you can be healed. You can be healed of your sin sickness. You can be healed of your physical sickness. You can be healed of your mental sickness. You can be healed of your, of your gnawing, guilty past. If you can just look at the tree of life and come to Jesus Christ and know that God took a certain tree, put his son upon that tree, and his son died on the cross of Calvary, shed his blood for your sins and my sin, the Lord must show you a tree, a tree of life, because your heart must must receive this tree. You must get healing in your heart. And the only way you're going to get forgiveness in your heart is through the, what Jesus Christ did on the cross of Calvary. Amen? You know how I got forgiveness in my heart? It's the tree. Jesus who died on the tree. That's, that's, that's how I, I live for God today because Jesus died on a tree. At that tree, Jesus Christ shed his blood for my sins. He loved me. God so loved the world that he gave his son to die on a certain tree. That tree was just an instrument. That tree was just an implement for Jesus Christ to die. But the blessed Son of God bled and died on the cross of Calvary so that you and I could be not only forgiven and have mercy, but we could be blessed and encouraged and strengthened and have life more abundantly. And that Jesus died on that cross so that you and I could be healed. Healed in mind, healed in heart, healed in body. Jesus Christ died on the cross because he wants to heal the waters of your life. Jesus Christ wants to heal the waters of your bitter past. Jesus Christ wants to heal the waters of your troubled soul. Jesus Christ wants to heal. And the only way you can get that is get that tree of life in your heart. Get it in your mind. Get it in your heart. You see... God's love never changes. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. God's forgiveness never changes. His mercy endures forever. God's power never changes, for thine is the power, the glory, forever. God's word never changes. The universe and everything in it may collapse and fall, which it will in the great tribulation. But God's word will stand forever. There in Matthew 24, verse 35. Jesus Christ said, you can, you can hold on to my word. Our Lord must show us a tree. Not just any tree, but a tree of life. For Jesus died on the cross, rose again from the dead. And that tree of life is no longer on planet earth except in the person of Jesus. Jesus. One day we'll go to heaven, there'll be a literal tree of life there. Because Jesus spiritually is that tree of life. He is the tree of life. He's the giver of all life. But I want you to know that we've got to get that tree in our heart. We, you get our sins taken care of. Nothing changes. His mercy will not change. His love will not change. Nothing shall separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. That brings me to the last part. His promise to judge will not change. 
You say, oh, preacher, you could have preached all night and mentioned that, not mentioned that. Well, his promise to judge will not change. John 5, verse 22. Jesus Christ said, For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. Matthew 25, verse 41, he said to them on his left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. One day Jesus will judge. I thought you said, preacher, his love never changes. I thought you said, preacher, his mercy never changes. I thought you said, preacher, his forgiveness never changes. I thought you said, preacher, his word never changes. But you just told me he made a promise that he would judge, and that judgment that's coming will never change. You just told me, yeah. That's true, but we need to understand that Jesus Christ was judged on the cross of Calvary for our sins, and that is a permanent forgiveness for our soul. That is a permanent touch of God. Have you stopped to think about it? Jesus Christ, when he came to planet Earth, never condemned one person. Oh, he kind of taunted the Pharisees and the scribes. But you know, Jesus never, he didn't say to the woman at Jacob's, well, you dirty dog, you've been married five times, you shacked up with a guy, you're going to hell. Because you've been married before, you'll never be able to preach or share or tell anything about me. You're just going to rot. No, that's the devil's words. Jesus Christ led her to the tree of life. Who is him? Who is Jesus? She was saved, and she got a drink of water that changed her forever. She got a drink of that water that that tree fell down in the waters of Myra and healed the waters. She got a drink of everlasting life. She got a drink of God's goodness. Stop and think about it. They brought this woman to Jesus that was caught in the act of adultery, the very act of adultery, and Jesus Christ said, I don't condemn you. Where are your accusers? You know, they had to all walk off, and he says, where's your accusers? She said, none. And he said, I don't condemn you either. Go and sin no more. Stop and think. Jesus Christ never judged, condemned anybody when he came to earth. He never condemned one person when he came to earth. He never brought death to one person when he came to earth. He didn't kill He didn't maim. He didn't destroy. Jesus Christ came and loved, presented Jesus Christ, presented the love of God. He never judged. Why? Because he's going to judge himself for you and for I. And Jesus Christ went to the cross of Calvary, and there he judged you. There on the cross of Calvary, he judged the woman at Jacob's well. There on the cross of Calvary, he judged his disciples. There at the cross of Calvary, he judged the world. There at the cross of uh, uh, Calvary, there on that cross, Jesus Christ took our judgment, died for our sin, went to the grave, rose again from the grave, went back to the Father and said, I'll be back. And when I come back, I'm going to judge. I'm going to judge everybody that says no to my love. I'm going to judge everybody that says no to my word. I'm going to judge everybody that says no to my mercy. I'm going to judge everyone that says that rejects my words. I'm going to judge everybody that rejects my promise to judge. I'm going to judge. And I want you to know when Jesus Christ returns to earth, in Revelation chapter 19, he comes in righteousness and in judgment. And he does judge and make war. And his vestures dipped in blood. But everybody redeemed from the cross will be with him. Because we've been judged through Jesus. You got to admit that's just really good, good theology. That's that. That's good Jesus. I mean, the blessing of Jesus. And I want to say to everybody in this room, get it in your head. You're you're you can be really bad. You can say I'm horrible. You can say I, there's no hope for me. Get that out of your head. Squeeze Jesus in there. Allow Jesus to come in there and understand that there's nothing so bad that Jesus can't forgive. There's nothing so horrific that Jesus can't heal. There's nothing that Jesus can't cleanse and heal and bless. Quit exalting your sin. Exalt Jesus Christ. Don't exalt your failure. 
Exalt the success of the mighty one, Jesus Christ, King of kings and Lord of lords. Get it in your head. And then get it in your heart. And when you get it in your head that you're healed by the stripes of Jesus Christ, when you get it in your head that Jesus Christ loves you, you get it in your head that Jesus Christ came and died for you, when you get it in your head that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and then you get it in your heart, and you start speaking the healing power of God, and you start speaking the grace of God, and you start speaking the power of God, as that woman did with an issue of blood, if I can but touch him, I shall, I shall be whole. If I just get there, she kept saying within herself, he's an awesome God. Kept saying in herself, he can heal my body. She kept saying in herself, God can do anything. She kept saying in herself, if I can just touch him, if I can just brush up against his presence, I'll be made whole. And I want you to know when you get it in your head and you get it in your heart and you start pronouncing and proclaiming that God Almighty, if God be for us, who can be against us? And I understand that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday when he cleansed the leper, healed the, uh, the, uh, raised the dead, and, and healed the sick and dying. He's the same yesterday, and he's the same today. He hasn't changed, and he's the same tomorrow. He's such a healer for yesterday. How many would agree that Jesus healed yesterday? How many agree Jesus heals today? Well, he's such a healer that he heals so good he gives us a brand new body in the future, tomorrow. Ultimate healing. Isn't that good? Wow. I, uh, I'm grateful for the fact that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I want you to know your mind can be divided up in three, three pieces. The past, the present, and the future. And you need to put the memories that are bad and wicked and vile, put them under the blood. Get your, get your head thinking. Get your past covered. Get your today together and run with the right crowd. And say the right things. Live for God. I'm not saying that you, that you can just speak things into existence. I'm not saying that at all. But I am saying that your chances of living to be old, I mean extremely old, long life, are better when you run with, when you run with the right crowd. And when you think the right things. Amen? Hello? Today, this woman showed us something beautiful, and that was the pursuit of healing. And I shared with you the pursuit of healing. It's not a matter of just, I'm believing God from a healing. It's a matter of you getting your mind focused, getting your heart focused, and allowing yourself to run with the right crowd and pursue your healing. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stand with me. Josh going to come and bring us on. How many have been enjoying these healing series of <laughs> messages on healing? And by the way, it does work. God's Word works. And God does heal. He's a healing God. He's a saving God. Get it in your head. God's good. Get it in your head. God's mercy never changes. Get it in your head. Sure, he's going to judge. He's going to judge all them that reject his blood, reject his name, reject his mercy, reject his blood. But all them that received him gave he power to become the sons of God. John chapter 1 verse 12. When Jesus Christ returns, guess what? When he returns in the clouds of glory in Revelation chapter 19, verse 11, when Jesus Christ returns, not one person will be with Jesus sick. 
Not one horse will have a broken leg. Not one person will be broken or sick. Kind of like when they came out of Egypt. Not one was feeble. Not one was sick. And we're coming back. Amen? It's God's will to heal you. He wants to heal you. But He wants to get it in your head first and get it in your heart. When you get it in your head, get it in your heart. And run with the right crowd. And say the right things. And live the supernatural excitement of God. God can heal you. I want you to join with me right now. And just just pray from your heart right now. Jesus... Please heal me. Jesus, remove all sickness, please, from my body. Jesus, cleanse me. Forgive me. Jesus, let me live until your return. Let me live much older. Let me live to be fruitful and plentiful for you. God, we denounce cancer in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we speak healing. We believe that you're healing cancer, removing it. We're not commanding. We're not trying to make anything happen. We're just believing that, God, you are, you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. We ask that cancer dissolve. We ask that people's backs be healed. We ask that people's bones be healed. We ask that the walk will be healed and blessed and the minds will be stirred. We ask God for your healing in Jesus' name. Josh is going to sing. We're going to invite you if you want to come to an altar. We're going to invite you to come. You see, Jesus not only heals us physically, but he heals us mentally, our heart and our spirit. We got to get it in our head, get it in our heart, get it in our spirit. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change. He doesn't change. Go ahead, y'all. My Savior bleed and did my sorrow. If you missed any of today's broadcast, would like to watch it again, or maybe share it with your friends, you can do that easily by heading over to our YouTube channel. Simply go to www.youtube.com forward slash Ozark School Gospel Church. You'll find today's broadcast as well as many other great messages. While you're there, be sure to click that red subscribe button to stay up to date with all of our latest videos. It's totally free and a great way to stay connected with us.